I'm talking relationships worth more than money. No time for the fake or the phony. Tweezy drop the gym. It's so evident. Link up with the gang. I'm talking relationships worth more than money. You had like, you had like that ain't the tone, man. Oh, so you so you gonna play it for the intro? Yeah. Oh, you a wild boy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I can you show you the best. Yeah. Out I, the I mean, we already got it. We got our, our, our tiebreaker. You are. I can show you the best. Yeah, we got the tiebreaker. Then I can tell you. Then I can tell you. Yeah, so we should speak louder. We should speak louder. We should speak louder than the words. I speak. All right, man. Check it out. Look, we live. Wrote. We live. All right, look, welcome back to Relationships Worth More Than Money Podcast. I am Tweezy. And to the left, who I got? You got Mr. B-U-D, Mr. Brother. B-U-D, baby. Man. B-U-D, baby. Yeah, what's good, bro? <laughs> it's, it's good, bro. This is uh, my first interview in like two years, so, yeah. you know, I'm glad, yeah. glad I'm back. It's been a minute, man. <laughs> it's been a minute, man. Um, How did we meet? We met because... I went to the studio and met um, Will. Will. Yeah. Will stayed right down the street from me. Shout out to Will. Uh, my sister actually uh, was getting her album ready. And then she was like, it's a studio right down the street. Let's go. So I went with her. And then Will was talking. And then I was like, after him and my sister finished business, I was like, I'll do music too. And then I was like, if you need anybody... If you got any producers or anything that needs songs written or anything, any way I can help, it's like I know somebody. And then he sent me you. Yeah. Damn, that's dope. Yep. And ever since, man. Ever that was since. what? Three years ago? I don't goddamn three years ago. Was it? No. Two? Bro, Two. think about it's, it. You know what? It's 2024. Oh, you know what? That's what I'm trying to tell you. That is kind of wild. Yeah. It might have been like two years now. Like two. Let me see. It might have been like two years. I moved in here. Almost two years. You've been here for like two years? Um, well. You know, um, you've been here like a year, bro. Yeah, it's like a year and some change. And then uh, and then we met near the tail end when you was at the other spot. Yeah. But it's been like. It's been a minute. Been yeah, it's like been at least years. a year now. Yeah. A year for sure. For sure. Because you been put me on that. the. Um, what's the fuck, man? Cut water. Yeah. <laughs> Cutwater, <laughs> hey man, I need my sponsorship, man, because Cutwater was straight up. Hey, you put me on that joint. You the first person to put me on that. Heavy, dog. <laughs> heavy, man. So look, man, tell everybody like where BUD from, man, because I know where you're from. So but they need I, to know. Well, I'm originally from is South Carolina, in the middle of nowhere, in the woods. I grew up in the country. I'm a country boy at heart. Uh what city? It's called Pamtico. And then mm. my neighborhood, we call it Mac Mill. Yeah. So, you know, every place got their own little divide. So my neighborhood is Mac Mill. So I've been born and raised in South Carolina, grew up in the country. Uh, so, you know, my my mentality is try to do right by people and they do right by you. Yeah. So that's my whole vibe. How, how was the upbringing in South Carolina? Country as shit. Yeah. But yeah. I seen pops on the ground the other week. You know what I mean? Exactly. We teach cut, you how to damn cut do down uh, trees. Take take uh t- swap out a uh a a blade, little chainsaw, chainsaw blade. blade. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm straight country like that. Yeah. Uh, I had pigs, had chickens, type yeah, that's that's how I grew up. I didn't grow up in the city at all. My life is not urban. Not <laughs> urban at all. It didn't get urban till when? Uh after I went to college. Okay. What I college? Went, uh, South Carolina State. Historical Black College, man. Hey, HBCU. Go, go Shout out to the HBCUs, HBCUs, man. We go yeah. support them. Yeah. We need them. Bulldogs. The Aggies, right? Uh, Aggies? Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Yeah, Yeah, y'all be, y'all be Dion and them. We, we me act champs. Yeah, there. y'all be Dion and them in that, uh, uh-huh. yeah. that bowl game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Bulldog. remember that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Shout out to South Carolina But yeah, that was, uh, well, luckily before that, my uh mom always kept us, like, going places. So I kind of knew what stuff looked like, different cities and stuff. My sisters live in different cities growing up. So city life went far and it just ain't what I grew up to. So yeah. when I actually went to college, I went to Orangeburg where our state is. That was my first time being in the city living. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I done lived in a couple major cities. Yeah. I done went to Georgia, 
California. You know, kind of been all over. Okay. When when did you start the music journey? So it's cliche. Like I grew up in the church. My mom sing, my sister sing. So started singing in the church. And then when niggas started freestyling, I kind of jumped on that. So my first original song that I did that was my song, I was probably like 11. Yeah. Yeah, so music always been a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's in my fabric. So So what what, what kept you going though? Like, because from... I can tell, like, for me, like, when I heard you, when you first came through, I'm like, yo, what if, like, where this dude come oh, from? Oh, that's why I do. Because it yeah. was like, <laughs> like, you just went straight in the booth and just started recording. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, every beat I pulled up, you were just recording, 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 yeah, recording. Yeah, so I would tell you, this goes, this goes show my age, but, you know, back in the day, you could record yourself on boom boxes, speaking to the little mic. So yeah. I started there, started recording on uh, the boom box on tapes, and then just... As the internet grew and shit like that, niggas just grew at the times. You can get little mics and start recording. And I don't write music. I just come off the cuff with everything. So after wow, while, it's just repetition. You do something so long. Mm-hmm. Like you just, I can feel where shit go drop, where it's go come back in. And it's just, it's, it's like a second nature. So it's just work, to be honest. And uh, I've been blessed to work with some amazing engineers, including you. Appreciate it. Uh, the first person that recorded me is actually since we in the DMV. Um, I actually used to come up here. My first original beats was from my homeboy uh, Reap, Soul Reaper. He mm-hmm. made he made me beats. I met him in South Carolina State. I used to come up here to Baltimore, stay on like breaks, and just record in the city. So yeah. Yeah, I got I got the tutelage from a lot of people. A, a lot of people. Uh, a guy named Chop when I was in Atlanta. Uh, another guy, uh, Mark Deuce, when I was in uh, college. He he actually showed me how to do vocal backgrounds and how to actually arrange vocals and kind of build upon uh, harmonies and stuff like that. And then the late great Swizz, my bro, I uh, passed, but he. Speaking to him, the project, yeah, the the project that we got coming out, uh, just how he recorded me kind of, yeah, blew me into the artist I am now. So just walking into a a studio, I just know what to do. What's the name of that that album coming out? Is it an album or EP? It's an EP. EP? But it's uh, basically called I Didn't Forget You. Okay. And that's uh, a frame of... Everybody that been supporting me, I know I stopped doing music for like two years. So that's for my supporters. Then there's for Swizz that he passed. That's what, those are the last records that me and him did in passing when he passed. And then, to be honest, it's for myself, man. Like, yeah. I, ain't, I didn't forget because when, when I stopped, my whole life changed. So it was a different, different type of BUD. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just me getting back to who I am, so... That's the project, man. When when did that you. when did that sudden heart happen though? Like wh- around what time frame? Pandemic. Okay. I was in California. Uh, had stuff going on. I was in LA. Music going, and then life, man. Life is crazy. Yeah. Life smacked me in the face, and it made me readjust. Yeah. So. What um, with the readjustment, did is that when you like move? Back here or? Nah, so what's crazy is I went through this whole journey. To be honest, if we go get deep, I felt like God was kind of punishing me how I viewed it. Like, I wound up going to New Mexico. So Mm -hmm. I went to the desert away from everything that I wanted. I left L.A. where music and everything was. Mm -hmm. And I just went to the middle of nowhere. And honestly, I felt like I was being punished. But then... uh, I felt like I I found healing in myself there and went through some lessons and growth, man. I think everything happened for a reason. And we do play a part in stuff happening to us. But sometimes you get put in situations where it wound up better for you in the long run. So I think that's what happened to me. I went there and that's what I needed. New Mexico was what I needed. I thought I was going to stay there. 
that situation didn't work out and I came to the DMV. And how, how long you was in uh, New Mexico? I was there for like a year and a half. Yeah. And you just, just. I was. I did, did you do so any music crazy, there? I did do music there. Yeah. And I met some amazing people there too. So uh, I can't get away from it. But I just was, I was trying to do man, man work. Yeah. So I felt like the music was, wasn't intangible with that. It was actually counterintuitive. So I felt like I had to leave it alone to become a better man. So it was, it was just, it was a turmoil situation, but the growth got me to this point. And I'm better than I was then. So. Like, what's, what's some of the things while you was in New Mexico that you, you kind of built and learned, like, how to be a man and, like, what's, like, give me, like, a few uh, things. Like, so, you know what I'm I guess we're going to keep cutting through the layers. I left L.A. because I lost a child. Right. So when I lost a child, it kind of shattered my reality. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I had to look at myself, like, what's going on with you right now in the present? My whole life, I always look to the future, and it's like, no matter what's going on in my present, I know where I'm headed. Right. But that situation made me look at the present and be like, what you got going on? Like, mm. yeah, you out here dream chasing, but like, what what tangible stuff do you have in life as a man? And it just, it just shattered my reality and thinking because I had to be like, you're right. As a man, you need some more work. So I went to New Mexico and I wound up working with juvenile boys, I wound up taking a program out there. So in that sense, I feel like you always get what you need. I lost my child, but then I wound up having like 40 boys that I had to take care of. Mm -hmm. And it helped me grow. It helped me be uh, more firm in my thought process because I had people looking up to me and I had to be, I had to be bud. I had to be, well, I had to be Reginald at yeah. that point. Right. And it was like before I could be like, yeah, I'll do this, whatever. And it was on my time. But when you got people that depend on you, you have to be accountable for yourself. So you have to be accountable so that they can take direction from you because they depended on you and they needed that structure. So it made me, it just me in the position to be like, you got to stand on everything you say because people watching you now. And yeah. if you ain't standing on what you say, like you stand on business, they go, they go lose faith in you. So yeah, it was, it was uh, like being more firm and secure in what I'm saying. And just knowing that people that looking up to you and depending on, not that it, not that I ain't never had that before. Mm -hmm. It was just at this point in time, it was an actual job. And it was like, if you, if you got, you can walk away from certain stuff in the in the regular world, mm -hmm. but this was something that I was deciding to come to every day. So it was like you got to be ready every day. Right. Yeah. Now with those with those forty kids, man, like how many of them that you feel like kind of grasp your your uh your mentality and, and understood like what it's like and, and change made made changes for themselves. Like did any of them become yeah, better? A lot of the kids reached back out to me after they finished the program. I just. This is what I can say, man. I think consistency is the thing. So if you take a kid out of an environment, they can change, they can grow, but it's hard to go back to that same environment and not have that same support that you had when you was able to be somewhere else. Right. So just the reality is sometimes if you get put back in the same predicament that you left, you can backtrack. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like sometimes the kids don't get a, a true chance. They get a break from yeah. a, a rough reality. reality. Yeah, yeah, they get a break, but then they have to go back in that. And then I would just tell them, like, you got to you gotta make a decision for yourself. Like, I, I get it. Because I had teenage boys. So I'm like, I get it. Whatever happened when you was a kid, you couldn't control. But everything now, you kind of, you making decisions to do what you're doing now. Yeah. So you got to you gotta take responsibility. And, and I feel like just to do that as a man... The more you take responsibility for what happened to you, the more you feel empowered and feel controlled to move, and it don't feel so hopeless. I feel like a lot of people stuck in situations because they feel like they can't control what's going on. Mm -hmm. But the, in order to control what's going on, you got to take more responsibility, and that's that's the, the cognitive disconnect that people have. They don't want to 
take responsibility because and accountability. That exactly. Yeah. That as a man, that's that's the foundation. Yeah, exactly. So what um with with the New Mexico to DMV, how did that transition? Like how you transition back here? So I was like, you know what, I can stay in New Mexico. It's cool out here. You yeah. know what? But you no know, little foreign type of vibe out here. Yeah, you like you like the you like the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it was kinda it kinda reminded me of South Carolina. It was it was a slow paced thing, retirement type of vibe. The landscape looked different, but you the energy was the same. So I knew how to maneuver around that. Uh but I had a situation come with that and it didn't pan out the way I thought it should be. And I was just like, you know what? I ain't from here. I'm going to go about my business. Yeah. I just try to pay attention to certain signs in life. Like, I feel like God do speak to people. Like, if you pay attention, you can see certain things happen. And when it's time to go, it's time to go. So I just took note, and I was like, all right, I'm going to get out of here. And I came from my nephew's graduation Mm -hmm. because my nephew and my sister live here and my brother live here. I came for a graduation, and then I was actually going to go back to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But I got here. And I was like, uh, I just was taking care of kids I don't know. And my nephew, his own man now. Yeah. Like I wanna I wanna spend time with him. So I guess my whole adult my whole adult life, I I left my family. So yeah. I've been away from my family chasing out the music. Right. So this is my first time being in an area where I can see my sisters or see my sister and my nephew every day, see my brother every day if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So it was just a different experience. And I told my nephew, I was like, I'll stay till you go to college. And when he went, uh, I had a situation come up where I could stay and actually work. So I was just like, I'm going to stay for a little bit. Yeah. And then that's how we wound up getting here. Shout out to Neff, man. Dude, yeah. big, man. He came big over. Dog. He came that, <laughs> He came over. Um, to the studio? Yeah, to the studio. We was working on some music, and he was just listening in on it. And uh, Good yeah. kid, man. Yeah, man. Good yeah. kid. How is it like uh being back around family, man? Like like what's what's the most important thing when you when you be around family that you appreciate? They presence, man. I think for so long I was in the position that I just told myself you got to focus on what's in front of you cuz if I thought about my family too much or or what was going on back home that would make you want to go back. Mm-hmm. And I had my mind made up that I was go follow my passion with this music. So I got to be thankful for the time I give it them. But when I'm not there, I got to focus on what's in front of me. Because mm-hmm. if I don't, I'm going to fall and wind up going back home and then feeling the type of way anyway. Right. But um, just being here now with them is just, yeah, just seeing how valuable that their presence is and being thankful for them. Because, again, I'm I'm the youngest. Yeah. So I didn't really grow up with my siblings anyway. Because so, they was already gone by the time. Yeah, they was already gone by the time I wasn't a annoying little kid. So now sometimes just to look at my sister and be like, damn, that's my sister. Oh, that's Making my moves. brother. Yeah. yeah. Because I didn't, I, it's weird, but it's just like I didn't see them that much. So it's mm-hmm. like, but now I see them, it's like sometimes you had to realize that that's really my sister. Yeah. Yeah, like, damn, they look just like my daddy. I know yeah. that sounds stupid, but. Right. right. <laughs> my brother looked just like my dad. So sometimes it's just like, huh. I guess I lived in the world so much that I had to tell myself I was by myself just so I could keep focused mm-hmm. that it's different now that I see that, that physically I can see that I'm not by myself. Right. So, yeah, it's a different, different voyage now. Yeah, man. I mean, you, you, uh, family, I tell people all the time, bro, like family is, is, is very important. It's, it's a very important piece and key piece to your life, but it also can be, uh, uh, a, a terrible, yeah, a terrible a piece, you know hindrance. what I'm saying? But when you got a good piece of that family, man, that, that connects you and keeps you going and kind of motivates you to, to go out there and, 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 and reach for the stars. Yeah. That's what keep things going, man. And the way how we connected, you know what I mean? Just off of like will connecting us, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And sh- man, we've been tight ever, ever since. since. You know what I'm saying? Man. We've been tight ever since. And it's like, you don't really get that with people. You know what I'm saying? We had that talk the other day. I'm like, bro, like you just really have to go out there and just trust people as far as you can throw them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
or like what you told me the other day, you was like, um, it's it's kind of your fault. Yeah, you know what responsibility. Saying? Go back to responsibility. It's, it's, it's right? your it's your fault because he showed you. Who yeah, they, people will show you who they is, and you have to decide: is this person go be a positive in my life, or they go be a negative? And if you decide to keep them, whatever comes with that, that's on you because yeah. you decided to let them stay around. Right, right. And I tell people all the time, man, like you have to. Um, you can't judge the book out the gate. Mm. You know what I mean? Like as much as I, I feel like. I can read people. I still give them a chance to see where you gonna take it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because sometimes, man, like you never know. Like I was telling my daughter the other day, I'm like, "Hey, like this girl might be going through something. You never know what she's going through and why she's so angry and like she don't speak to nobody." So I tell that people. To, I tell that to everybody. Like, look, man, you you can't just judge them off the rip. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when they do, <laughs> believe it. When they do, show you them cards. <laughs> Believe Don't it. try to put them back in the deck. Nah. Now I would, I would say this on a like it. It also goes down to like what's the environment. If it's something right. that immediately that can put you in danger, yeah, you like oh this person did this. Nah, yeah. let me go ahead and get away from this person. But in general, if you're dealing with somebody on a day to day basis, you kind of got to give people room to show you who they is. Mm-hmm. And then once you understand who they is, you can move correctly around them. Right. But and that's also come down to being genuine. Like when I when I meet people, I just I'm open. Right. You can't make connections if you're not open. Yeah. Like a closed hand can't receive nothing. Right. You so you gotta be nothing. open. Yeah. Like closed mouth don't get fed. Exactly. You, you gotta you gotta speak up. You gotta say something. You gotta reach out when you need to when you can. Um. But I think that's too. Um. Like that southern hospitality. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. my grandparents, they from Mississippi on my dad's side, and my other grandparents from Florida. So, like, me going down south every summer, you, you know what I mean? You got that vibe. I understood, like, you know what I mean, what it's like to, you know what I mean, have that hospitality. But then coming back up to Detroit, it was like... People you, hate you. Yeah, you, you had to be... You, you, people hate yeah. you. People don't want... People, people want what you got, but at the same time, people also there to offer extended hand. But you just got to know who to trust. Who to trust. You know what I mean? I think that's a test, too. I kind of thought about this for a while, too. I feel like in the country, because people are so spread out, you happy to see another person. Yeah. That's why everybody wave at each other in the country and stuff like that. Because you yeah. probably done drove like 10 miles and didn't see just nobody. To see, <laughs> just to see one person, because all you seen was land. Yeah, but in the city, yeah. like, people, it's so congested. And people on top of each other. So people are already, like, got anxiety about that. So, like... Stuck and be off putting. They so, in a rush to get somewhere. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's yeah, so like it'll slow down. When you don't got no personal space, you already feel like life is on top of you. Then you add people on top of you. You can see how that can be like a combustible situation. Yeah. Now let's get let's get to this album, dog. This yes, EP. Let's, let's get to it. Let's get to it because um, we it. had a debate earlier. Here we go. But we don't. <laughs> I'm. I already. We already the one. You know what I mean? We. The song is out. Speak louder is the one that's going. Everybody going to hear first. Yeah. But when we when you gonna drop it? The eleven, on my birthday, three eleven. Okay, so three eleven. So man, we gotta go get the pictures. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get, the, get pictures. the pictures today. No, yeah. Um, so it's a lot. So when y'all see this, this probably will be the uh, outfit for the pictures. Yeah. So three yeah, eleven. Same we day. Can actually, this all happened in the same day. I didn't wear the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, talk to me about the first track. Uh, the first track is called How It Goes. How It Goes. Um, basically, it's just me speaking on the reality of things. And just like where I was at. And me expressing the frustration and just the reality of my life. So, it's a, it's a pretty upbeat, uh, tempo type of song. And... Your boy rapping, snapping on there. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, that's, it depends on where you met me at in in my musical transition. Some people know me for being battle rapping. Some people know me for just straight rapping. And then some people know me for R&B. But, you know, wherever you met me at, this project will have everything to fulfill everybody's palate. So, How It Goes is definitely a, a high energy song and uh i got them bars for you all right like and then right after how it goes is the the song that you deem to be what it is 
I didn't deem it. It was all, it was, hey, it was all hands. Speak louder. Speak louder. Speak louder. Action, speak louder. You know, it's a smooth track. Uh, it, it got vocals on there. It go back to the harmonies and everything. So, you know, it's, it's just a good vibe. Good, you know, sexual type of tension going on in that joint. But, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's, it's a banger. Yeah, okay, banger. so now, after speak louder, what we got? We got Toxic. Exactly. Yeah, now this joint. I feel like it it showcases all my talents at its best. So it's rapping, harmony, all in it. Um, it's it's a mid tempo song. It it'll, it'll get you moving though. But it's a it's one of them ones for sure. It's one of them ones. And after toxic, we got uh, have it your way. So that's an that's another. Uh, it's a it's a pretty high tempo song. More R and B straight singing in that song too. Mm-hmm. And then the next one will be uh Don't Worry. That's, don't worry. That's my favorite joint. Your favorite joint. <laughs> the one he lost. The one that lost. But it's still fire though. It's right? still a banger. It's still a banger. That's, but that right there to me is like a uh ultimate R and B joint. And then the last song is uh Don't Give Up. And that's a uh, rap and a little bit of vocals in that joint too. But yeah. uh the whole project is just a a vibe, just a vibe. It ain't me trying to hit you over here with a million songs. Just something to show appreciation for all the people that have been rocking with me and to get my feet back wet. But, yeah, your boy still still got got them joints. All right, so after after uh, this EP, what you what you working on? Do you already got you already got a, a six month, 12 month plan? Or are yeah, you, are you already, pushing this I already one? got a. I already had another project done. It's called New Life. So that is a thing too. Um and then we got joints. A bunch of a, a bunch, bunch of joints. joints. Yeah, a bunch. And then I got another project that's I that I actually did out in New Mexico too, which is I know I said I wasn't doing music, but again, I wasn't doing it to the capacity that I was doing it yeah. in uh California and then in Atlanta. The full but, clip. Yeah, I, but again, I can't get away from music no matter how I try to fight it. Just now, I'm back into accepting it as what it is. Now, how you feel what, what you doing, you back doing the music, man? How you feel mental, mentally, like, where are you, like, as far as your mental health? Like, how you feel? So, I mean, first of all, I'm not a mental health. I just feel like it is what it is. You just got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot, bro. It's, yeah, it it's is. a lot. But when I mean, you, when you sit down, it is a lot. Uh, my mental health is, yeah, I get my dad, I will, I will give him the almighty praise. Like, just, you just do what you got to do. It ain't that you don't feel what you feel. You just accept it and figure out how to, Make your situation better. So my mental health is, I'm good, bro. I'm loving the fact that I'm loving music again. Yeah. I don't think I, because at one point I did really feel like I hated it Mm -hmm. for a second. Because I felt like I wasted my life. This has been my life goal the whole time. And I feel like I, I made the wrong decision. And that was pretty foolish of me. I just think I was in a space I ain't never been in before. Right. Yeah. So just took me for a loop. And we back. So better than ever. B U D, okay. baby. B U D, baby. <laughs> what and what I know what B U D stands for. <laughs> I know what it means. What does B U D come? What is that what does it stand for and when what made you come up with B U D out so, of all the names in the world? All neither one what it stands for or where the name come from has anything to do with me. But it has been my childhood name. From my childhood, it's like my oldest sister said, when I came home from the hospital, we go call you Bud. Yeah, from the Cosby that's, Show. That's that's a southern <laughs> thing too, bro. Everybody got a nickname. Yeah, everybody so got a nickname. I'm a big Fabulous fan, so when I started rapping, I was like, Fabulous always spread, uh, spell his name, so I was like, I'm gonna spell my name B U D. Yeah. And then when I got into college and was doing music, um. My cousin came to my house. I used to record at home. My cousin came to my house. He was like, you know what I've been thinking BUD can stand for? He was like, stand for brought up different. So shout out to my cousin, Broderick. Because I owe that all to him. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Brought up different. Brought up different. Yeah. BUD, baby. (laughs) 
Yes, sir. But look, dog, like you, you, um, you do music. You grind. Uh, very, very family oriented. Um, when do you make time for yourself? Cause I, bro, I barely get a hold of you. I guess when I sleep. <laughs> when you sleep. Okay. Now, how, mean, how much? How much sleep do you get? Depends on what's going on. Guys, <laughs> like now, nah, I haven't slept. Got off work. I be trying to tell. I be trying to tell. Came people, here. Man. Stuff. Listen, I feel like again, you just gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, I think me doing music and I have my moments, but life ain't really about us per se. It's about how we can affect others around us. To me, let me say that mm-hmm. to me, and I just want to make an impact around people in my life and people that I care about and people outside of that. I just want to be a light. So I think I get my joy out of when I when I'm able to do stuff for people I care about. So that that's my moments. But my selfish moments is when I do music. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. anytime I'm moving. Word, word. Um top five. Top five. Top five. You Artists or rappers. Two, two top fives. Two okay. top fives, all right? So top five rappers. And top five artists or songwriters? Rappers. Let's just do rappers first. Uh, DMX. Mm-hmm. Uh, Is this in any fabulous. order or just? I'm not doing no order at okay. all. DMX, DMX Fab. Fabulous. Cameron. Mm-hmm. Lil Wayne. Mm-hmm. All time. Yeah, who I'm going to put in that fifth joint. I say Drake. DMX, Fab, Cam, Wayne, and Drake. All mm-hmm. right, cool. That's a that's a that's a dope lineup. Top uh, five. Top five R and B. R and B. R and B. Or or would you say just songwriters? Or songwriters. Or yeah, yeah. My favorite songwriter is Rico Love. Okay. Uh, Fire. I got to meet him, so that's been dope. Uh, my favorite R and B group is One Twelve. Mm. Cupid was the the song the song. Yeah. I got to work with them. That's that's really my biggest music music accomplishment. I feel yeah. I got to work with them. Uh, I could have met them on some fan type stuff or any type of way, but I met them in the studio, yeah. and I used to want to sound like Slim, and I'm in the studio and Slim listening to me. Yeah, so that was a surreal moment. Um, James Brown, where we at three three. Um. I want to say Joe. Mm-hmm. That's kind of hard for R&B, man. Because I got it's like a, lot, a couple other people that it's I want to do on there. I'm going to do two interchangeable. Okay. I'm going to say Chris Brown mm-hmm. interchangeable with Trey Songs, and then Usher will be like behind that. So Rico <laughs> Love, right? Because songwriter. Yeah, he, Rico he Love, top song right? Yeah, One Twelve, mm-hmm. James Brown, mm-hmm. Joe, mm-hmm. Chris Brown, Chris Brown, interchangeable with Trey Songs, Trey Songs and Usher, and Usher. So they, so they five A, B, and C. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. What um, if you can give somebody? We always do this too. Uh, every episode, we call it gym class, not G Y M. But G E M, like, what gem could you give somebody out there? You know what I mean? That can help them in life. It don't even got to be about music. It can be about anything. Like, what's a gem you can always use that you use? I give two. All right. If you got conviction about what you're doing, that's how you know it's truly what you want to do. Because at that point, it don't matter what the odds are or what adversary come against you. You you got a conviction that I'm doing this no matter what. So that will also give you the foresight and insight that this is something you really care about. Because the minute that we get hard and it's like you like, nah, this ain't what I want. You know for sure that that wasn't something you really believed in. 
So the minute that you find something you're willing to go to war about, hold on to that. And then my biggest thing is take responsibility yeah. for everything that happened to you. Even if somebody else do it to you, look at it like, what did I do to make that person feel like they can do that to me? Because again, the more the more responsibility you, you, you put upon yourself, the more you have control and power to make a difference in your life. So those would be my two. Okay. If you got conviction. Conviction and taking the and responsibility. Taking responsibility. Mm-hmm. Those two dope things, man. Um, it's always, I always like every gym class would be something different. That's dope. And it, it's, to me, it helps, man. Like when you actually give um, a gym because people come back and hit me and be like, yo, dog, like this drink was dope. And I like this part. I like this part. Um, and the gym class always sit with everybody yeah. because it's something that, you know what I mean? People can take, take and use. It. Like, you know what I mean? It's a tool. It's just throw it in a toolbox. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, yeah, man. We uh, we back. We 2024. Back. 2024. March 11th. I didn't forget you. I didn't forget I you. I didn't forget you, man. Um, this is B-U-D. B-U-D, baby. I am Tweezy. And this is Relationships Worth More Than Money. And uh, yeah, like that, we gonna like come back. We out. It's episode twelve too, by the way. <laughs> episode twelve. Yeah, let's get it. Relationships worth more than money. Podcast, gang. I'm talking relationships worth more than money. No time for the fake or the phony.